sorry guys, I was having um, some technological difficulties. It tends to freeze. So if you know of any recording programs, send them to my way, you know, send them my way via email. But again, the Battle of Tippecanoe becomes a rallying cry for Warhawks because Henry, William Henry Harrison is gonna launch this preemptive strike. However, Tecumseh ends up launching a pre-dawn strike against William Henry Harrison's forces. Now, while yes, Harrison's forces are eventually victorious, they suffer a lot of casualties. They get really hurt by this. In the aftermath of the Battle of Tippecanoe, which occurs again in 1811, a lot of these American troops will dig up graves, they will desecrate Native American graves, they will scalp um, and mutilate corpses um, after the Battle of Tippecanoe or in the aftermath of the Battle of Tippecanoe. Now, the War of 1812 is often referred Mr. Madison's War. In June, or June 18th, 1812, uh, Congress declares war on Great Britain. And Madison, through this declaration of war, he becomes the first president to ask for a declaration of war. Now, where do people fall with the War of 1812? Do they support it or do they oppose it? Republicans tend to support the War of 1812, whereas Federalists tend to oppose the War of 1812. In 1813, there's the Battle of Stony Creek. Now, the goal of the Battle of Stony Creek was to ca uh, capture the British capital of York, which is uh, modern day in today's society. It's located in the uh, city of Toronto. Now, the goal was to capture the British capital of York. Uh, with the Battle of, Battle of Stony Creek, um, unfortunately, it is an American defeat. 3,500 Americans are defeated by 700 British. I'll repeat that for emphasis, okay? 3,500 Americans defeated by an army of 700 British. In August 1814, the British will actually capture or they will attack Washington. Um, and uh, in, this, uh, in this attack, I would say on Washington, Dolly Madison, who is Madison's wife, famously takes the painting of George Washington and gets it out of the, uh, this burning White House. So she kind of saves this portrait. The war ends uh, with the Treaty of Ghent on December 24th. Uh, 1814. So December 24th, Christmas Eve of 1814, we get the Treaty of Ghent. However, okay, the Battle of New Orleans, which ends up being important because we get this victor of the Battle of New Orleans being um, Andrew Jackson, right? The Battle of New Orleans actually takes place after the treaty is signed, but word of this treaty has gotten back yet. And so the Battle of New Orleans, which is an American victory, occurs January 8th, 1815, actually after the war is over. So we do get um, a success after the war is actually over. Um, but out of the Battle of New Orleans, we get this national hero um, of Andrew Jackson. Um, so in the next chapter, I think we go over Andrew Jackson. He is a, a very interesting fellow, I'll say. But we'll get to Andrew Jackson um, in the next few chapters. So thanks for sticking uh, to this lecture. I hope you enjoyed it. And again, if you have any questions, especially on chapter nine, which will be coming next, shoot me an email and I'll create a video just answering your chapter nine questions. So uh, I look forward to hearing those questions. Good luck on your test that is part of this module. And uh, I'll see you guys next week. All right, bye.